museum is a place that connects the past with the present, and a place that prepares for the future. Today, we will introduce you to Korea University's museum to learn about Korea University and the history of Korea. The Seoul campus of Korea University features the Korea University Museum, which is known for its history and tradition. The Korea University Museum, which opened in 1934, has about 100,000 items ranging from archaeological artifacts, history, folklore, art, school history, and modern history. In addition, the seven permanent exhibition rooms of the museum display about 600 national treasures and works, such as the iconic Hunchon Clock and the Tonggoldo, according to each theme. So, shall we start the tour of the Korea University Museum? In the 100 Years History Exhibition Room, you can witness the growth and development of Korea University, the first modern educational institution established by Koreans. In this space, you can view the draft constitution, which is a symbolic document marking the start of modern Korean history, photos of Korea University students, and posters they used to promote their democratization activities, along with a display of university sports stars. The History and Folklore Exhibition Room is a space where you can glimpse the daily life of people living during the Joseon Dynasty, with items on display from various palaces. The first cultural heritage that is introduced is the Hunchon Clock, designated as National Treasure No. 230. This clock is a mechanical automatic watch which was created in 1669 by Song Ye Yong, a scientist during the reign of King Hyun Jong. The Hunchon Clock is a combination of Western mechanical watches and traditional watchmaking technologies. A prominent scientist, Joseph Needham, once praised this clock exclaiming that the world's leading science museums should have replicas of this watch. This is the Punchang Placenta Jar, designated as National Treasure No. 177. It was discovered in the 1960s during construction and excavation work on the grounds of Korea University. In the past, Koreans regarded the placenta as the source of life for the newborn baby. Historical research has confirmed that the Puchon placenta jar is from the royal family at the time, as it was carefully packaged and preserved as the people believed that it could affect the country's prosperity. This jar was made during the Joseon dynasty in the 15th century and is styled in the order of a thunderbolt or square vortex pattern, lotus petal pattern, and a chrysanthemum petal pattern. The outer jar is voluminous, but the small inner jar is slender. This painting is by Kim Hongdo, a famous painter of the late Joseon dynasty. This painting illustrates a tall cypress reminiscent of a soaring dragon and below it is a depiction of a deity sitting comfortably on a slightly sloping floor while blowing the shang. Kim Hongdo painted many similar paintings in his 30s and 40s, and this painting is also estimated to be a work during this period of his life. The bark of a pine tree is described as elastic enough to be reminiscent of the scales of a dragon. Also, the upper part of the tree is not drawn intentionally, which has the effect of imagining the growing momentum of the tree. Susanjando is a carved wood block of the city of Seoul as it was in the early 19th century. It is Korea's national treasure, number 853. The area from Tobongsan Mountain in the north of Seoul to the Han River in the south is depicted, and Jongno Street is engraved crossing east and west. About 460 important places such as major roads and facilities, palaces, Jongmyo Shrine, and Sajik are marked. Among the many woodblock maps produced during the Joseon Dynasty, this woodblock map is rated as outstanding in terms of accuracy, precision, and scale.
The Tongguoldo is a national treasure which is a painting of precise details of a Joseon dynasty palace landscape. Tongguoldo is a combination of Changdokgung and Changgyeonggung, which has the meaning of a palace located on the eastern side of Seoul. Gyeonghae Palace was called Seogol. Tongguoldo is a painting which depicts Changdokgung and Changgyeonggung. It is estimated that the painting was painted during the period between 1826 and 1830, during the reign of King Sunjo. It is divided into 16 books, but when displayed together, there is a result of a large painting measuring 576 centimeters wide and 273 centimeters high. The long part cut in this way is called a chop, and one chop is folded five times and stored. A distinctive feature is that in an era when there were no airplanes, the 10 square kilometers of the East Palace was exquisitely drawn from a bird's eye view. The story of Tongoldo will be discussed later and more in detail by an expert. Tongguoldo literally translates as painting of the East Palace. During the Joseon Dynasty, there are four major palaces, Gyeongbokgung, which was the first to be built, and the main palace was often called the North Palace or Bukgwol. Gyeonghigung was referred to as the West Palace or Seogwol. Dongwol collectively was replying Changdeokgung and Changgyeonggung palaces in the East, so the East Palace. Dongguoldo literally again means uh, painting of Changdeokgung and Changgyeonggung Palace 200 years ago. Incredibly accurate and highly detailed, at present there are two known editions of Tongolto, um, one in Tonghua University Museum and the, the other here in Korea University Museum. Um, the one in Tonghua University Museum has been transformed into a folding screen while the one in Korea University Museum retains its original style and format as it was once cr first created. Both are designated as National Treasure 249. The Tongolto in Korea University Museum is comprised of 16 painting albums or flower books. Each of these flower books are unfolded and when put together and joined, you see the appearance of the East Palace. Each flower book painting album is bound with a blue cloth and painted with ink and color and silk. The painting itself overall has a bird's eye view as if the painting is viewed from above the skies. Unfortunately, there are no written records um, to answer all these questions, but the characteristic of the painting has very strong palace qualities, so it's unlikely that it was taken out of the palace for security reasons. It's assumed that the painters of this painting would have been members of the Painting Academy, the government office for painters um, in the Joseon dynasty. As to when it was created, um, we can base this on the details of information given from the painting, per, um, presumably around 1828 to 1830. If you stand in front of the painting, you see on the left side is Changdeokgung Palace and on the right side is Changgyeonggung Palace. On the northern part, you have the Huan Park, the gardens. Um, it's roughly divided into six different parts, um, the Weijeon, um, and then the Gwollegaksa Complex, or the government offices, uh, and the Donggung, the Crown Prince's office, 
Daejeon, where the king and queen reside, and um, the rest of the area for royal family members and workers, palace workers. Injongjeon Hall is the central building in Changdeokgung Palace and it is a ceremonial space used for important national events. Um, for instance, on the 1st and 15th of every month, when officials bow to the king, greeted the new year and received foreign envoys, ceremonies were held here. It is also a place where celebrations were held on special occasions such as Suyeon, which is the milestone 60th birthday party. Um, as such, In Jongjeon is a building that shows the authority of the king and the royal family, and this is reflected in the building and the space. In Jongjeon Hall was built on two floors with two pedestals, and on the two roofs, there's a decoration of a shape of a sacred beast. Chojong, which is a large yard in front of In Jongjeon, has rows of Pumgesok on east and west in which officials lined up according to their position and rank. In the center of the court, there is Odo, the royal path. And in the middle of the steps, the king used to climb the palakin, tapto, which is a stone decorated with phoenix. Now let's look at Kwollegaksa government office complex. During the Joseon dynasty, the palace was not only the living space for the king, but also the highest government officers, where they carried out their royal duties. Therefore, there are government of offices that perform various tasks within the palace, and Dongguldo depicts these government offices in detail. On the west side of In Jongjeon Hall, there was Hongmungwan, Office of Special Advisors, Infirmary, inside the palace where the royal family were treated when they were ill, Sangiwon, that made clothes for the royal family, and Nebyongjo, that kept the palace safe, is also seen. On the east side of In Jongjeon Hall, there is Daecheong, which was used as a conference room by the officials who gave advice to the king and monitored officials to prevent corruption. Sung Jongwon offices served as the royal secretariat, and Son Jong office served as the king's bodyguard and took care of important documents. Now let's look at Huan Park and Kyujanggak Library. In Dongbol-do, a ridge to the north runs between Changdeokgung Palace and Changgyeonggung Palace area. When crossing the ridge, the backyard area spreads to north. This is Huan Park. Huan is a place for numerous complex functions where military training was held in the presence of the king, banquets were held at the royal household, and archery was enjoyed. It was also a place where the king and queen could experience the work of the common people, such as silkworm farming, which was a major industry at that time. Various scientific facilities can be found in Dongguldo painting, in particular in the front yard of Chunghwadang, was an activity space for the crown prince, which is why there are various scientific instruments set up for the purpose of education. There is a sundial to measure the time by checking the position of the sun, the sogan to observe the movement of the celestial bodies, a rain gauge to measure the amount of rain, and a wind chimney to measure the direction and the strength of the wind. Here you can see some strange stones. Bizarre mountain-shaped natural stones were installed as an object of appreciation during the Joseon dynasty. The two stones painted on both sides of Aeryeonjong and Dongguldo can still be seen when you visit the actual spot. 
the stone painted on the pond of Tongmyeongjeon site is still in Changgyeonggung and interesting to look at. Here you can see numerous trees of various types painted in Tonggolto, and they even remain today as they protect the palace. It's fun to find trees in Tonggolto. Um, first, we have a flower tree in front of Donamun Gate in Changdeokgung Palace. And here we have a cypress tree on the west side of Sononjeon Hall in Changdeokgung Palace. You can find a juniper tree north of Sononjeon Hall in Changdeokgung Palace as well. Over the years, the appearance of Tonggwalto has undergone many changes due to fires and wars. In the case of Gollegaksa government office complex in Changdeokgung, part of it has been restored, but empty plots still remain. In the early 20th century, the site of Gollegaksa government office complex in Changgyeonggung Palace was filled with animals, in addition, um, Nenongpo, the 11 rice fields where the king prayed for good harvest and experienced farming, was turned into a pond. A cable car was installed in this pond and a restaurant was built around it to make it an amusement park. Since the 1980s, the zoo and the cable car have been demolished, but remnants of the former appearance are still hard to find. Tonggolto is a detailed documentary painting um, abundant with information of the original palace 200 years ago. The shape, the layout, the landscape of the buildings, um, we all turn to Tonggolto as a work of art. The exceptional uh, expression in Tonggolto is incredibly important for the study of the history of art. Um, researchers, as research materials, Painters, architects, um, palace landscapers all turned to Tonggolto. Uh, furthermore, when Changdeokgung and Changgyeonggung is being restored, this is the primary source that people will look to to restore the original palace. It is, I think, one of the most important examples to show how we must preserve and protect our cultural heritage. We have introduced the Korea University Museum and its representative collections. There are many other collections and artifacts that we haven't been able to introduce today. When you visit Korea University, we hope you will stop by the museum to see for yourself all that the museum has to offer and how it continues to preserve and promote important aspects of Korea's history.